Hey savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we're talking about a program in Linux. We'll be going through how to install and use a program called Supervisor. I've used this program in many distributions in order to manage the startup of processes that I've created. Also, it's very exciting to see more and more people engaging with the channel. Thanks to everyone who's been commenting, liking, and subscribing lately. We just passed up the 200 subscriber mark, which is a great thing, and I hope to keep engaging with every one of you. It really helps out seeing everyone active, and I appreciate you stopping by the channel. So Supervisor is a client-server program that allows you to control and manage processes on most Unix-based systems. With that being said, it can run on systems such as Solaris, FreeBSD, Linux, and Mac OS. And instead of having to write your own RCD scripts, you can use Supervisor to manage your processes and setup is simple. So let's begin by installing Supervisor. Today I'm using Ubuntu in order to install Supervisor and you can of course use other Linux distributions to install it as well. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and start my terminal up. At this point I'll be doing everything in the root user so I'm going to sudo into the root sudo su here and if I type in my password I am now the root user. So we can install this program by simply doing pip install if you're using pip so pip install supervisor or for this distribution of Ubuntu, we can do apt get, actually apt get install supervisor. Give it a moment here while it's getting things ready. And then, yes, I do confirm that I want to write the changes. And here we go, we have it. So there's also an option to install supervisor manually if you have to. I'll put a link in the description below for how to do that and of course and of course you'll have to have an internet connection for uh, this step that I just did. So I wrote a very uh, simple program where it prints out messages to the council every second and we'll watch that program run in the background. Let me just show you that program when I open it up here so you can see very simple. We got main here an integer called time and in a while loop that's indefinite we just increment the time every second and we spit out savvy program time elapsed with the time so that's what we'd expect to see out of this program I'll go ahead and run it for you real quick so you can see what we get uh, it's on my desktop so let me change directories and to simply run it I already have it built we we'll just do that so you can see the time is elapsing here so four seconds five seconds have gone by so we can also use supervisor to go ahead and manage this program as a process and we should also be able to see savvy program in the process tree as well so let's go ahead and set up a config file so we can tell supervisor the new process that we've created and that we want it to manage. Uh, we can do this by simply going to a new directory created since we installed Supervisor. And now I'll go ahead and create a config for Supervisor to be able to read and create and manage the uh, savvy program process. So um, let me actually make this terminal a little bigger so you guys can see what I'm typing here got to do this earlier so this should be big enough for most of you and if we go ahead use vim in order to create a new file in etsy supervisor config d now we can call this configuration file whatever we want i'm just going to call it savvy program since that's what the program is called and it's going to be a dot conf file if we create this in this folder, the config.d folder of Supervisor, Supervisor will be able to read this configuration file in and then manage your process. So there's a little bit of formatting here. So in order for Supervisor to read this file properly, we'll have to follow the proper Supervisor syntax, which is followed by giving this config file a program name. So we can just do program colon savvy program 
and that gives the process its name. And then we can do a command, and that command is to run the program. Let me just start another terminal in order to make sure I have the right directory here. So cd home savvy nick desktop, and then the program is savvy program. How did I have that written? Yes, so perfect. Just wanted to make sure. So home savvy nick desktop and it's called savvy program. So if we have any errors, we'll see those errors as well. Now the next config option I want is the auto start. So I'm going to set auto start to true so it automatically starts up the program and then as well auto restart so we get auto restarted if there's a failure. And I believe there's a few times it retries before giving up completely. So it might be like three retries before it uh, supervisor gives up on trying to restart the program. You'll have to look that up to figure out what that is exactly. And then a couple more things that we want is the standard error log file and where we want to put that file. I'll go ahead and just put it in, uh, let's see, var log and underneath uh, savvy program. And since this is the error file, I'm going to do dot error dot log you can call that whatever you want actually so feel free to do whatever and then the standard out log file var log and I'll call it the same thing except I'll do dot out dot log and with these two log files here we'll be able to view any output by the program and we do have some console output that we want to view. So that will be accessible in here. And any kind of errors that we have will be accessible in the standard log error log file, which will be in this location. So if we have any problems with the program, that will show up in here if it, does, if it fails to execute, let's say. So after we're done with this, all we do is do a write and quit out of them here. And in order for supervisor to recognize this new process that we created, we will do a command supervisor ctl reread. And this will reread the config directory and figure out whether or not any changes have been made to any of the config files. And as you can see, since we did create a new config file, it says savvy program is now available. And since it's available, we want it to go ahead and start being managed by supervisor. And we can do this simply by doing supervisor CTL update. And now savvy program has been added to a process group. So how do we check whether or not savvy program is running? So we can simply do supervisor CTL. And that tells us here savvy program is running its ID number is 4089 and it's been up for 15 seconds here so I'm gonna quit out of this prompt here and let's see so since it said running that means it's running successfully you'll get different messages if your program didn't start up successfully and there is an exception so since it's running that's a good sign what we can do is check the standard output log that we told to be in var log um, savvy dot out dot log. So you can see that this log now exists. And if we open it up, we can see that the program is running and there's been 67 seconds already elapsed, which is great. So let's quit out of that. Another command that I can do is tail dash f and we can do it on the same file so savvy program dot out dot log and that's just gonna go ahead and follow what's popping up in the log right now so you can see we keep incrementing the time by one second and it keeps elapsing here so the program is running successfully great so uh, one last thing we can check is uh, see if that process is running so uh, we had said that the PID number is 4089 and we can figure out 
um, if that process is running. So if we do ps space ax space and then we'll pipe that to grep, we'll be able to see if this 4089 process exists. Eight, nine, and it does. So what is that process? Well, it's a process that's running this program here, Savvy Program, on Home Savvy Nick Desktop. So Supervisor can be very powerful and it can manage process groups as well. And there's many options that you can use. It's good for setting up servers and starting them up while your computer is booting up or your server is booting up. It's a great tool to know about and to use. You can use the command supervisor CTL to manage most things. And you can also start stop processes. And there's a bunch of different configuration switches that you can use, which are all in the documentation. I've included a link in the description below for more information about supervisor and its uses. So check it out if you're interested. I hope uh, you enjoyed this Linux talk and install of Supervisor on Linux. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them below in the comments section. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.